Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Xbox controller to your you know, Windows machine to play PlayStation 2 games using the PCSX2 emulator. So this is an updated version because I've got an older tutorial for Windows. I'll have a separate one for like Mac and Linux. But the reason I'm creating an updated one is the interface has changed a fair bit on PCSX2. If you're running one of the older versions like 1.6, then you'll have the older interface feel free to use the controller for that or controller video for that i recommend this one this version i should say just because there's a lot more improvements a lot more compatibility with games not much reason why you wouldn't want to use this one so this is the one i would recommend personally and i'll provide a link in the description to the set of video if you haven't already set it, set it up but you've stumbled upon this video so in terms of controller there's a few things to know so you got the xbox 360 controller <coughs> You got the Xbox One, you know, sort of generation of con controllers. Then you got the Xbox Series generation of controllers. Let's go backwards. If you have an Xbox Series generation controller, it works via wireless, via Bluetooth. So you need Bluetooth dongle or Bluetooth built in on your computer. And you can just connect a USB C cable to USB A or USB C on the other end, whatever your computer has. You do a wired connection. Either one works fine. And the wired one, you just plug in and you're good to go. The wireless one, there's a few extra steps which I'll show you momentarily. If you have an Xbox One controller, that's where it gets a bit tricky. For wired, they all work out of the box using the micro USB cable to USB on the other end, you're good to go. So you won't have any issues there. And you can do this on Windows 10, Windows 11, 7 as well, I guess. And with Xbox One controllers, they had a older set of controllers so if you bought it at launch or ran not long after launch you'll have the set of controllers where you need i'll see if i've actually got it in one of these drawers oh yeah no nope, it's not in this drawer per se no i don't have it here but you needed a specific so let me actually open up the browser for you and to show you what you need an Xbox One dongle. So with the Xbox Series X, you don't need this. But with the old controllers of Xbox One, you need this dongle. And there's like a sync button there. You just press the sync button on your Xbox One controller to connect it via wireless. Because it has proprietary technology, not standard Bluetooth. If you have one of the newer ones, and I usually find you can tell by the fact that the D-pad is usually joined up and this button <coughs> lb and rb work fine no matter where you click it this is one of the things i've noticed about the newer controllers of xbox one generation compared to the older ones and it's got regular bluetooth so that you're all good to go and in terms of 360 if you have a wired controller like a hardwired one obviously plug and play you're good to go if you have a wireless one you cannot you know wire that up even though you know you can get a xbox 360 i think it's called a plug and play the kit yeah one of these i remember these big ass connections that does not transfer data it only transfers power so you can't actually you know to my surprise many years ago uh, when i was a kid i you know because obviously you know when, when you're a kid trying to get get, get stuff you're persuading your parents and you know, I remember getting one of these thinking that I can not only charge it, I can also use it as a controller on my PC. Because I was like, I don't mind why so the, the USB is only there. But it turned out you can't. You, you can only use it for power, not data. If you want to connect a wireless 360 controller, you need a 360 dongle. And, you know, they look something like this. So, you know, not that, that one, that's like a Wi-Fi one. One of these. You can get third-party ones, obviously the official ones. You know, we're definitely going to work. Plug and play, press the sync button, press the sync button on your Xbox 360 controller, you're good to go. So if you have one of the newer ones, like Xbox Series controller or a new Xbox One controller, let me show you how to connect it via Bluetooth. And to do, do what you do, you type in Bluetooth. And let me bring it from my other screen. Go to add Bluetooth or device. Before we click Bluetooth, let's put this into sync mode. And you'll notice and the a sync button there. You just press, keep that pressed and the light will start flashing. Press Bluetooth, select Xbox wireless controller. It will go solid in a second. There we go. Click done, X, 
and now we can launch up PCSX2. And if we go to settings, controllers, go to, obviously feel free to map it to, you know, controller port two, or if you do multi-tap for, you know, multiple controllers, feel free to do that. But I'm gonna do control port one, DualShock two, and bindings. And if I select anything like the up, and I press X, it detects X. If I press the right analog stick, it did text the right analog stick. And let's say if I was to, so as you can see, you can't fully see my screen. This is just a little tip. If you can't fully see your screen, you know, I recommend that you go to display settings and make sure that the zoom is not too high, like lower it down, or maybe increase the resolution if you have that option too. Because I, I know a lot of people, do say that they can't, you know, see some of the buttons that are at the bottom, like the you know, new profile and the beauty of profiles is you can have different controller configuration for different games, different genre games, different players. Obviously, you load a profile if you have a, you know, multiple profiles and delete, and it saves automatically. So if I clear the mapping, you can manually go around and map it itself, or go to automatic mapping, select Xbox Series X controller, and it does a great, you know, you know, job of mapping it. It's you know you're good to go if you want to override it have a slightly different configuration maybe flip the analog sticks or the d-pad and face buttons or whatever you want to do feel free to that's the beauty of emulators and in settings you can invert the analog sticks change the sensitivity the dead zone so if you have any dead zone issues and you can also add some macros as well if you want to trigger a macro using some keyboard key and that could trigger maybe a and uh, moving the left stick forward for example or maybe trigger, you know, a bunch of keys being pressed and that could activate some cheat in GTA or some other game. Other than that, we can launch a game up. So if we launch up Crash Nitro Kart, I'm sure I've got a state for this saved. I thought I had one. Yes. Uh... Oh, I do not have one. I thought I did. My bad. And now at the... Ooh. You can see I can move up and down. Press A. Oh, select French. <laughs> Should be able to navigate it. I wonder if the language is in French or just the. Let's have a look. I mean, I'm actually interested to see if it, the language itself is in French. Uh, it is. Oh my god. Okay, so I'll just skip that. Let me skip this when I can. I just wanna show you it working in game, but you know, other than that, you're you are you are honestly good to go. Let's continue with that saving. Nah. Easy. Yeah, do press bandicoot. Debut deporté. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what game you're looking forward to playing with your Xbox controller on your PlayStation 2 emulator. As you can see, and I can use the analog stick and the D-pad to move. Yes. Oh yeah, I got someone. I mean, I find it doesn't slow them down as much as you know Mario, for example. From the missiles, nowhere near as good at, again, it's probably purposeful at targeting the bad guys compared to the red shell in Mario Kart. I missed that. Okay, so I will wrap up. You know, what I'm going to do for my next tutorial is to save the state there we go so that's how you connect up your xbox controller hopefully i've covered everything with xbox controller that you will try and connect if you have any questions especially with the older controllers you know it can get a bit patchy with them how to do things let me know and if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one bye bye